Hello and welcome once again to the Word of the Day podcast coming to you as per usual, pre-recorded from the RAV4 studios. I am your host, Jamie Silva, and I am positively champing at the bit to pleasantly explain another useful word to you all. The word today is a verb, foist. And no, this is not just me saying first with a Bronx or Brooklyn accent. What I'm talking about is actually a separate word altogether, one that I think means to give someone something, but kind of aggressively, with the connotation that the recipient didn't ask for whatever it is, and definitely isn't very enthusiastic about receiving it. The online edition of Foist goes like this, quote, to impose an unwelcome or unnecessary person or thing on, unquote. Okay, this is a little clumsy, but it's basically the same idea as my definition, only it expands from just foisting things on people to foisting actual people on other people. This is a legitimate sense of foist, and an interesting one too, but it isn't quite as common, so I'll start by focusing on foisting things on people. Notice, by the way, that the proper phrases are foist on or foist upon, and that's it. Let's turn to the usage for this primary sense of foist. See, people are given things all the time, and of course, in many cases, they don't want those things. Sometimes we're talking about physical objects, sometimes abstract ones, especially tasks or responsibilities. In either case, two things are going on. First, again, the intended recipient doesn't want whatever they're being given. But second, this person will probably actively protest. They'll express their reluctance to accept whatever it is. So, to do a little compare and contrast here, if someone gives you a large framed photo of themselves, you know, walking in the park, and you just say, oh, wow, thanks, while secretly hating it, you can't accuse the giver of foisting the picture upon you. As far as they know, you like it, seeing as how they didn't have to keep pressuring you to take it. On the other hand, if, when they give you the picture, you say, hey, uh, this is nice and all, but, well... I mean, my apartment is a little crowded, I'm just not really sure where I would put it. And they're like, oh no, come on, you'll find a spot, here, take it. And you're like, uh, no, I think I prefer paintings to photographs anyway. And they're like, oh, that's okay, why don't you just take the photograph home and paint it? Artists do that all the time. And you say, uh, okay, sure, whatever. And they're like, okay, great, you'll love it. Hey, here's another picture of me. See, I'm riding a bike in this one. So this exchange easily qualifies as foisting. Even though you hinted very strongly that you didn't want the picture, this rude person pushed it on you anyways and wouldn't take no for an answer. Keep in mind, though, that there are also some settings where active verbal opposition isn't necessary for the unwanted giving to qualify as foisting. And neither is repeated insistence that you accept whatever's being offered. Like, if you give someone something and they have no opportunity to say no for whatever reason, that counts too. Maybe you run away really fast before they can object, or maybe the recipient works for you, so you can foist tasks on them and they can't say no. These are both eligible scenarios. Also, if it's super clear that no one in their right mind would want the thing being given because it's so terrible, then you don't have to actually spell out the recipient's discomfort or unwillingness to take it. It's just understood that if they could have turned it down, they would have, and the concept of foisting still applies. As you may have picked up by now, foisting has a definite negative connotation. No one likes being given things they don't want, and even if the giver isn't doing this intentionally, like perhaps they actually think you'd appreciate the old copies of The Economist that they keep dropping in your mail slot, at best, these people just aren't very sensitive to the feelings and preferences of those around them. They might mean well, but they're kind of inconsiderate. To pick another example, if you were spreading the word about this podcast amongst your friends, well, first off, that's great, but keep in mind that you don't want to be too pushy. So saying, hey, have you listened to the Word of the Day podcast? It's superlatively entertaining and unimaginably informative, and you should check it out sometime. Like, that's fine. That's just providing your friends with useful information, maybe a little gentle nudge in there as well, but that's it. On the other hand, if you were to say, here, I have this show right here on my phone. You have to listen to it. No, not later. Right now. Do it right now. Here, you can, you can have my earbuds. Now I'm just going to jam these in your ears real quick and, and turn up the volume. Like, no, obviously that would be way overdoing it, that would be foisting the show upon your friends, and they probably wouldn't appreciate it. Let's now get a couple examples of foist in everyday conversation or writing. And remember, this can both refer to tangible things and abstract stuff, like responsibilities. Example number one. Here, hold this, would you please, said Kelly, foisting her half-eaten churro on a passerby at the mall while she knelt to tie her shoe. Example number two. 
You know it's going to be very cold at the beach, Trevor, said Trevor's mother, foisting a jacket on him as he went out the door. Trust me, when the sun goes down, you'll want this. Example number three. When her little nephew began fussing and whining, Jill quickly foisted him upon her mother, who was always happy to hold him, no matter his mood. Example number four. Martin was angry when his boss foisted a big project on him right before his vacation, so he turned around and foisted it on his hapless intern instead. This example, by the way, and the particular sense of foist therein, reminds me of a fun maxim that I like to think I coined a while back, one that's perfect for work settings. It goes like this, delegate today, blame someone else tomorrow. And the idea here is that if you were supposed to get something done but you didn't or you did it poorly, that's your fault and you might get in trouble. But if you delegate that responsibility to someone else, if you foist it on an unwilling coworker or even better, a subordinate, and then they miss the deadline or do a shoddy job or whatever, then that's their problem now, not yours. They'll be the one who gets in hot water. Obviously, this is not actually career advice, uh, but it's a fun saying to toss around. Okay, let's now take a look at an alternate and somewhat less common sense of foist, the one that I talked about at the beginning, where it isn't tangible things or responsibilities that get foisted, but people. And most frequently, you will see references to people foisting themselves, generally into social settings where they don't belong, or upon people who don't want to hang out with them. The sense of giving something unwanted is still there, except I guess in this case you're sort of giving yourself, and people are either too polite to object, or they do object and you just ignore them. The best way to explain this form of foist is through an example, and I found a great one in a random book called The Memories of 50 Years by an otherwise unremarkable and unrenowned author named W.H. Sparks. He wrote as follows, quote, Mr. Clay entered the room in company with William Archer, a man whose only merit and sole pride was having been born in Virginia, whose arrogance was only equaled by the poverty of his intellect, and who always foisted himself upon the presence of eminent men, deeming himself great because of his impudence and their association." Unquote. What's going on here, you see, is that this William Archer fellow is a man of inferior talent and character who nonetheless inserts himself into distinguished company where he fancies he belongs. And we aren't told explicitly here that the eminent men objected to his presence, either openly or silently, but if Mr. Archer is such a terrible person, one of those reactions is probably implied. Here's another example. Think of how when a sports team wins a championship and they have a parade through the city, like the mayor will usually find a way to insinuate him or herself into the festivities somehow, perhaps by giving the general manager a key to the city, making a speech about how we've always had faith in this team and how proud we all are and how much they mean to our fine city, etc. I think this is foisting through and through, because the team is probably a way bigger deal than the mayor, who is just hoping to kind of bask in the rays of victory and get the fans to associate them with the team they adore. I frankly doubt very much that teams ask public officials to join them on their parades, but since it would be impolite to say no, these officials are permitted to foist themselves upon the teams and their celebrations. Now, you can also foist yourself not just upon a group, but on just one person, and kind of trap them in a social sense, where they don't want to talk to you, but you keep talking to them. You keep hanging around, refusing to take hints that they wish to leave, or that they wish you would leave. This is obviously extremely unpleasant behavior, and it's typically done in person, at a party or a bar or something, since if you try to do it via email or text or whatever, the other person could just ignore you, and the foisting would be unsuccessful. By the way, there are even more meanings of foist than those I've featured here, but they're so different that it would be like picking a whole different word and a less interesting one at that. Plus, I think we've covered enough ground in this episode already, so I think we'll call it there. Thank you all very much for listening, and thanks as well to producer Pete, who kept foisting bottles of water on me as I recorded to make sure I didn't get a sore throat. That is very considerate of you, Pete. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, anyway, remember, if you like the show, do tell a friend, but don't foist it on them. And if you ever want to write the show to suggest a word, or tell us how you've used one of the ones we've already covered, you can always do so by emailing us at wotdpodcast at gmail.com. For now, this is your host, Jamie Silva, saying so long from the Rav4 Studios. This has been the Word of the Day podcast, and we'll see you next time.